Records from ancient China mention the presence of a large species of crocodilian native to its rivers and wetlands. Until recently, it was assumed they were referring to the saltwater crocodile, a species common across Southeast Asia. However, re-examination of crocodilian bones dating to the Bronze Age found that they instead belong to an entirely new species, one whose last common ancestor with the saltwater crocodile predates the demise of the non-avian dinosaurs. Named Honusuchus sinensis, it grew over 6 meters long, and had an elongated, slender snout that marked it as a piscivore, or specialized fish eater. Six specimens belonging to this extinct crocodilian have been identified, all of which originate from southern China. The oldest is 5,000 years old, while the rest are roughly 3,000 years old. They were excavated between 1963 and 1980, but their true identity was not recognized until 2022. Most Hanyusuga specimens consist of skulls, but there is enough postcranial material to provide an adequate reconstruction of the rest of the body. Historical records are not the only evidence that these extinct reptiles encountered humans, as two of the skulls possess chop marks that indicate they were decapitated by bronze axes, a practice mentioned in the historical records. The cervical vertebrae of one specimen was cut in half by a single strike. While this was likely accomplished after the unfortunate Hanusukis had already been killed, the other skull possesses a dozen other axe cuts, which are thought to have been inflicted during its final battle. Han Yusukis' namesake is Han Yu, a famous writer and politician who lived during the reign of the Tang Dynasty 1200 years ago, and whose writings mention crocodilians now believed to have been Han Yusukis. Sukis means crocodile, while its species name, Sinensis, means from China. So Han Yusukis' full scientific name translates to Han Yu's Chinese crocodile. Sinensis also happens to be the species name of the only crocodilian which still inhabits China, Alligator Sinensis, commonly called the Chinese alligator. All identified Hanusuka specimens are subfossils, meaning the bones are so recent that they haven't yet undergone the process of fossilization. Because of this, they may still preserve DNA. While it is unlikely to be complete enough to bring Hanusukis back from extinction, a lot could be learned from mapping its genetic code and comparing it to its modern relatives. Similar studies have been conducted on a number of other recently extinct species, including mammoths, Neanderthals, and even the Malagasy horned crocodile Voe robustus. The ability to analyze Hanusukis' DNA promises to be particularly illuminating given its place within Crocodilia. Today, there are roughly 30 species of crocodilians divided into three subgroups, all of which had split from each other before the end of the Mesozoic Era. Of these, Hanusugus belongs to the most enigmatic. Named Gavialidae, this clade contains only two living species, the Garial and Tomastoma, sometimes called the False Garial or Malayan Garial. Like Hanusukis, they are specialized fish eaters with narrow, elongated snouts. With just two living representatives, the relationships within Gavialidae have been controversial. Before the age of genetic testing, morphological comparisons found Tomostoma to be closer to crocodiles than to the Garial, hence the name False Garial. However, molecular studies have since found it to be a true Gavialid although the exact interrelationships between them and the various extinct members of Gavialidae remain debated. The possibility of mapping the DNA of a third species of Gavialid could further refine science's understanding of this contentious branch of crocodilian evolution. In the meantime, Hanusukis has actually helped to close the morphological gap between the living Gavialids. Its general appearance was similar to Tomostoma, with a broader, less specialized snout than the true gharial. However, it and the gharial share a number of other traits to the exclusion of Tomostoma, and the phylogenetic analysis in the paper that described Hanusukis placed it as a basal member of Gavialinae, the gharial's branch of Gavialidae. Regardless, Hanusukis' last common ancestor with either species of extant Gavialid lived tens of millions of years ago. It was the last member of a newly recognized, and currently unnamed, Gavialid subclade which primarily inhabited East Asia, who will therefore be referred to as the East Asian Gavialids in this video.
other members of this Gavielant subclade, such as Pankusuchus, and the three species of Toyota Mahimia are often found on islands such as Taiwan and Japan, suggesting the East Asian Gavialids may have had a greater tolerance for salt water than modern Gavialids do. As mentioned earlier, Hanusuchus is thought to have been predominantly Piscivorous due to its slender, elongated snout. However, the gharial will hunt terrestrial prey when available. Tomastoma is more generalized, and has been known to kill deer, and occasionally even humans. Chinese records indicate that Hanusuchus engaged in similar behavior, with it being perceived as a threat to both people and livestock. Even tigers weren't considered safe from its jaws. Corrobating this, a comparison of the morphospace of living and prehistoric crocodilians found that Hanusuchus and the other East Asian Gavialids were at the very edge of Gavialinae, overlapping with the Tomastomines. Combined with how basal Gavialids have comparatively wider snouts, like those of Tomastoma and Hanusuchus, it can be inferred that the ecology of the first Gavialids was similar to Tomastoma, with the more Piscivorous gharial representing the derived condition. Hanusuchus was larger than modern Gavialids. The largest skull belonging to an extant species of crocodilian is an exceptionally large Tomastoma skull, which is 84 centimeters long. The largest Hanusuchus skull is 95 centimeters long, and its total body length is estimated to have been nearly 6.2 meters long. The saltwater crocodile, which has a proportionately shorter snout, can grow larger than this. However, even the smallest Hanusuka specimen is estimated to have had a length of 5.4 meters, and given the much smaller size sample of Hanusukas, it may have been the largest crocodilian to survive in two historical times. Ancient Chinese sources agree that the largest individuals of this species often reached a length of 6 meters. However, one of those very same sources mentions Hanusuka skulls with a length between 1.8 to 2.4 meters. This is twice the length of the largest known specimen, which given how the neurocentral sutures of its vertebrae had closed, was already a fully grown adult when it died. Furthermore, taking this figure at face value would imply Hanusuchus exceeded the length of even the prehistoric supercroc Sarcosuchus. Given the sheer disparity between the stated skull length and total body length, the former measurements were likely exaggerated. The teeth of Piscivorous crocodilians, such as Gavialids, are generally uniform in arrangement and size, but there is still some variation. Those of the East Asian Gavialids steadily increase in size across two waves. The largest pair of teeth in the second wave varies between species, but the seventh pair in the maxilla is always the largest in the first wave. The snout expands outwards from the spot in Hanusuchus's close relative, Tayotamahimia, but the snout stays thin in Hanusuchus itself. The orbital region, the area around the eyes, of Hanusuchus and other East Asian Gavialids was smoother and less elevated than those of modern Gavialids, an example of which is the modern Tomastoma skull at the bottom right. The skulls of both Hanusuchus and its closest living relative, the Gharial, have expanded sinus cavities. These cavities were placed further back in Hanusuchus' skull, distinguishing it from more derived Gavialines. While their purpose remains uncertain, they are hypothesized to expand the range of their vocalizations, as well as make these already sizable crocodilians sound even larger, and thus seem more attractive to prospective mates and more dangerous to potential rivals. Chinese records mention Hanusuchus making thunder-like sounds at night, which further supports this hypothesis. Male gharials possess a nasal boss, sometimes called a gara, which extends the length of their vocal tract, potentially further exaggerating their size. While bony corollas of garas have been found in some prehistoric gavialines, they are lacking in basal species such as Hanusuchus. The team that described Hanusuchus also compiled 20 ancient records thought to refer to it. The ancient sources only mention one other crocodilian in the region, the small and relatively docile Chinese alligator. However, it is possible that the larger crocodilians mentioned in some of these sources refer to saltwater crocodiles as previously thought. While the crocodile and gavialid lineages split during the Mesozoic era, from the perspective of the local populace, Hanusuchus and saltwater crocodiles may have not seemed very different from each other. 
Both were aggressive, 6 meter long crocodilians with longer, thinner snouts than the Chinese alligator. Due to their different diets, coexistence was possible. Tomastoma lives alongside the saltwater crocodile today, and the true gharial is able to coexist with the broader snouted mugger crocodile. Alternatively, seeing as how all Hanyutsuka subfossils originate from the Pearl River Delta, different parts of southern China could have been divided between the two crocodilians. Complicating matters? Due to their exceptional swimming capabilities, saltwater crocodiles occasionally travel far from their native range, so they could have sometimes ended up in China even if they weren't native. In any event, these records offer insights into Hanyutsukis' appearance and behavior that would have otherwise been lost to time, but they also include a number of colorful but doubtful claims. Among these are reports that its tail was prehensile, much in the manner of an elephant's trunk. While most of Hanyusukis' tail remains missing, this claim is unlikely. Crocodilian tails are their main source of propulsion in the water, and the adaptations needed to allow them to be prehensile would compromise their primary function. Unlike mammals, crocodilian tails are large enough to be useful weapons, which could be the origin of the claim that they were prehensile. Multiple sources also describe Hanyusukis with serrated teeth. This doesn't match the Hanyusukis subfossils, which have the same blunt edges as modern species. Serrated teeth were present in some extinct crocodilians, such as Boverisuchus, but they were typically terrestrial carnivores, not semi-aquatic piscivores, and in any event hadn't inhabited Asia since the Eocene Epoch tens of millions of years ago. It is possible the reports confused Hanyusukis with the Asian water monitor, a large, carnivorous reptile which does possess serrated teeth. The coloration of most Tanyusukis reconstructions consists of shades of brown, much like Tomastoma. However, ancient Chinese records variously describe it as yellow, brownish yellow, deep green, and occasionally white, while hatchlings are described as yellow and white. Some of these colors could describe the saltwater crocodile, once again highlighting the lack of clarity in the limited historical sources. Two sources claim that decapitated Hanyusuka's skulls regrew their teeth every 10 days, stopping after going through three sets. Crocodilians do replace their teeth regularly, but the process is not that fast and does not continue after death. For all the fanciful tales surrounding it, Hanyusukis may be a genuine example of a type of crocodilian and human interaction otherwise confined to myth. While medieval European castles never employed crocodiles as part of their defenses, one of the Chinese records claims crocodilians, presumably Hanyusukis, inhabited the moat surrounding a fortification near the city of Wuzhou during the Three Kingdoms period. The same source also mentions tigers being used to guard the fort's gates. The most famous contemporary mention of Hanyusukis was by Han Yu himself. There were reports of local crocodilians, once again, presumably Hanyusukis, attacking people and livestock during his governorship, to the extent that one of the rivers they inhabited was called Bad Creek. In response, Han Yu issued a proclamation directed at the crocodilians, ordering them to relocate to the nearby sea within a week, else he would order them to be slain by poisoned arrows. Seeing as how crocodilians have no understanding of human speech, and it is unclear whether Hanyusukis could even tolerate salt water, Hanyu presumably ended up ordering the use of the poisoned arrows. This is a common theme in the records regarding this extinct reptile. Besides poisoned arrows, a type of polearm called a G, pictured on the left, is also mentioned being employed against it. And as stated earlier, the available subfossils confirm that axes were also used. One source even mentions the use of quicklime as a poison to wipe them out. Over thousands of years, these extermination campaigns contributed heavily towards Hanyusukis' demise. Humans have deliberately destroyed predators before, such as the thylacine. While they are sometimes dangerous, apex predators are important components of their ecosystems, and worthy of existence for their own sake. Habitat loss was also a major factor behind Hanyusukis' extinction. A recent study found that the intensification of agriculture, not climate change, was correlated with the loss of other Chinese megafauna, such as elephants and rhinos, over the last few thousand years. 
Honiosuchus would have been particularly hard hit, as its native habitat has almost been entirely replaced with rice farms. Indeed, only about 200 of the smaller and less aggressive Chinese alligator remain in the wild. The last written report of Honiosuchus dates to 1630, and given the source's clear unfamiliarity with it, it is apparent the species was on its last legs by this time. Sadly, Honiosuchus might not have even been the last crocodilian to go extinct. The previously mentioned horned crocodile Voe was driven to extinction by humanity at roughly the same time. The rest of Gavialidae's future is also far from secure. Both extant species are endangered, with the gharial being listed as critically endangered, once again due to the actions of humanity. Honiosuchus demonstrates that historical losses in biodiversity may be underestimated, as ancient populations would often lump similar species together, or didn't provide enough details for modern taxonomists to tell them apart from surviving species. Far from being the same as the saltwater crocodile, Honiosuchus had a more piscivorous diet, and was the last species of a major lineage of crocodilians. Its basal position within Gabialidae has also offered insights into the evolution of the more specialized gharial. While the recent date of its extinction offers the potential to examine its DNA, the potential for its de-extinction seems dim, especially considering that its native habitat barely exists anymore. It is vital that humanity not let the tragedy that befell Honiosuchus to be repeated. Thank you for watching, and a thank you to my supporters on Patreon, who chose the subject of this video. By joining my Patreon, you will have access to similar polls to select the topics of many of my future videos. If you enjoyed this video, please remember to hit the like button, and if you would like to see more, consider subscribing if you haven't already. Finally, be sure to have a great day.